Hey guys and welcome to another video. Today I will be redesigning a very well-known villain, Maleficent. You have probably seen her uh, portrayed by Angelina Jolie in the movie uh, recently, but I like to remember her by the good old-fashioned Sleepy Beauty villain uh, we all know and love. And I got um, a task from a Patreon on my Patreon page to redesign her in my own style. So I hope you guys like what I make. Um, and the first thing I wanted to do regarding this piece is to make a, a pose that looks sl something like... Um, uh, a really uh, artsy piece uh, with a lot of uh, floral and swirly uh, decor just like you're used to me doing on my fantasy pieces. Uh, you can find them in my original art section on my YouTube channel. Uh, and I wanted her pose to be a bit over exaggerated, a bit dramatic with a strong jawline um, face showing from the sides, showing her horns, because originally Maleficent was made to be the devil's bride. She was nothing like the modern version, like the uh, good fairy turned uh, Maleficent. Um, she was pure evil, she was mean, she was... Um, um, uh, well, uh, really dare to make chaos and uh, that's something I wanted to incorporate in this design. Um, I decided to give her, well, as I usually do with my characters, I like to give them pointy ears and I gave her two sets of horns decorated with pearls uh, so that she can have that high fantasy feel to her and just a little bit of a headpiece to remind um, visually to look like uh, the Maleficent from the movies. Um, I really like to give um, villains uh, an opportunity to look fabulous so I like designing special coats and dresses and accessories for them because hey I'm a fashion designer by trade by name so some habits die hard I'm afraid and I really like combining fantasy clothes with um, modern clothes and uniforms and uh, Harajuku fashion and Japanese fashion so if you'd like to learn more about that you can always leave a comment below and tell me what you think I should draw next I would really love to hear your thoughts on the, your fame on your favorite Japanese fashion style whether it is a uniform style maybe clothes from a certain anime or a fashion style from the streets of Tokyo so you can always just leave your favorite ones in the description and uh, who knows uh, if you want I can do some tutorials on drawing that type of clothing. So going back to Maleficent I uh, wanted to incorporate her old-fashioned Disney sleeve design she had in the animated movie and uh, turn them into uh, freely long sleeves for this coat and combine them as a skirt, well, a short skirt uh, to go with it. And uh, I, I used some time skipping on this uh, video because um, it took me around three hours to draw this and it would take about half an hour of this vid video to uh, show you every tiny piece. Uh, in fast motion and I don't think any video uh, in YouTube uh, has been popular to be over three minutes long, let, er, let alone three hours long. Um, I used uh, the shape around her I liked and turned it into a highly decorated, uh, well, kind of a vignette, kind of a uh, decoration for the, the art piece itself. It doesn't have anything to do with her clothing. I just felt it looked pretty and wanted to do something that's more 
more than just a character design. I wanted it to have uh, some artistic value as an art piece as well for my patron. Uh, there's also a few, few of the patron uh, slots left, so you can check out my Patreon page in the description. Uh, I usually make my art pieces sent out to the Patreon's home addresses, unless it's a digital uh, commission every month, and you can literally ask me to draw anything you like, and I will send it to you, whether it's in the post or in the... Uh, e inbox on your email address. Um, I usually do traditional works, but I can also do a lot of uh, digitally drawn artworks and pretty much draw about anything. So test me out. As for the Maleficent design, I was highly inspired to do her shoes in a sort of a wacky fantasy Victorian way and uh, I just uh, wanted to make them a little bit inverted, like completely black with white seams and white shoelaces. So that's something I wanted to especially do for her with a slight hint of green glimmer on her, on her heels, on the inside of her heels. And as for the line art itself, uh, I place a lot of black areas because a lot of this character is actually either shaded or has a lot of black clothing or clothing that's behind the character, which is also something uh, Japanese manga artists usually paint completely black, um, as well as placing tiny triangles on... Uh, some areas where uh, objects interlap or you have slight shadows. So, oh, my accent just became unbearable on that one, sorry. Um, anyways, oh yeah, and a lot of you actually ask me about my accent and there are uh, quite a few people um, that ask me where I'm from. Um, <laughs> that's all in my about section on this YouTube channel. I'm trying to get my accent to improve. So thank you guys for showing your support and uh, liking what I do. And also there are a few of some people who consider my voice to be like I don't know annoying to them they can always just click on the mute button and enjoy the magic I do without my voice for the rest of you who actually want to learn some stuff or want to like communicate with me I will gladly speak for the rest of you with my wonderful uh, enchanting voice and I will explain to you how you can uh, make a green glimmer all across your character and uh, the important parts. For example, I'm using a light green color to uh, color in the main source of her green glowing wand. And for example, um, every piece of her, well, staff that's uh, reflecting the light should be covered on the upper side uh, with, the, uh, with the color, lightest color green. Then I added quickly, so that I could blend it better, I added some darker green shade and uh, proceeded to blend it with an N8 da <clears throat> dark gray um, marker. Dark gray marker is uh, great because you get that dark uh, feeling of black um, uh, fabric or black uh, area, but it's not completely black, so you can actually see some of the black line art without uh, losing it. Uh, that's why I combined the dark gray with the green on her clothing next to the place where the staff is glowing. So you can see that the part of her clothes that's closest to the staff is actually uh, has its edge colored in light green and the rest of it is colored in uh, dark gray. Uh, also some edges of the clothes are preferred to be colored in uh, light green so that you can make that illusion of the staff glowing. Um, also there's one big trick about uh, making um, stuff that glows appear more realistic. Uh, you can always um, 
do a simple trick by using a highly uh, concentrated color like pure green or pure red or pure orange and then surround it with a really dark color e either it's a dark same uh, like a dar darker shade of the same color or it's uh, something more like black or dark gray it's your choice try to play with it as much as possible and um, personally I think uh, this background was too much of a pain in the neck so I uh, cut a, a few parts where I am uh, like doing this for an entire hour or so but yeah it's certainly something to look um, a bit more impressive when you put some more details on a drawing it's a really simple well technically simple but a tedious way uh, to get your drawing to look more professional and more appealing to the eye because people will be looking at your drawing and be like oh there's so many stuff to look at for a long time um, for her dress I decided to combine the colors from the original Maleficent and using dark purple uh, I wanted to make her dress well skirt part and sleeves part uh, look more um, dark and magical almost like a night sky so that's why I combined it with some blending of dark blue currently it looks like a huge dark blue and purple mess and this is the part where most artists just give up they're like oh my god I've ruined this what is this uh, I can't see the the final drawing uh, showing as I imagined it and uh, this is just me giving you a reality check uh, every artist has doubts every artist make mis makes mistakes and uh, a lot of things actually looks worse before it becomes better so you should never give up and never give up your draw on your drawing until it's finished because uh, if you stop halfway there's an entire half you haven't done to show you how uh, how much you progressed or how much um, you did so Stay strong during this part, especially you people who are like me and dislike coloring, but like the shaping and the shading more. Um, it's pretty easy to s just quit or give up, but trust me, it's all worth the effort in the end when you see your drawing finalized and complete and fully colored and uh, if you don't like how uh, your drawings look when you fill it with color just wait for the final touches uh, you can do with white paint believe me white paint is something that saves a ton of drawings whether it is to uh, fix mistakes or just add some additional special effects or make stuff pop out uh, and make your drawing more alive so anyways um, another part of the tedious work was definitely this one where I had to pinpoint all of the golden parts all of the golden uh, frames and swirls and make them a little bit metallic that's why I uh, skipped a bit uh, and uh, just use my yellow well uh, golden copic to fill in all the swirls then i used a dark brown copic to actually go in the middle of each swirl and place a tiny uh, thin brown line so that it looks metallic uh, when you do metallic stuff always remember to leave out the edges white because this makes the the surface which is made out of metal look more realistic um, metallic surfaces usually have uh, edges which are lighter than the middle of the surface so when you do something metallic always uh, use the shadows in the middle of the surface so if it's uh, like a straight line for example her staff uh, the main shed shadow or the shaded area is actually in the middle of the staff so in the middle of each of these swirls the dark brown is actually the main shaded part that's how the metallic parts differ from other kinds of materials 
uh, and of course the the last touch but definitely the best and the funnest part is using the white paint to actually um, emboss or fix stuff for example I'm fixing the edges of her hair sometimes Copics go over the lines and mess up some areas so you need to fill them with white paint afterwards and then repaint them uh, I used the white paint with a thin brush a very very thin brush to just uh, emphasize some details uh, make her dress look more three-dimensional by popping out these huge feathers and um, just make it more vibrant more alive and of course every piece that's in front of her should be uh, well marked with a white white um, color and that's why I'm using it on her front leg to just make it uh, look like it's more in front of her and her white shoelaces you can't see right now but you will see soon on her uh, scanned version and of course I use the white gel pen to just add some decorational dots and additional pearls and I even used uh, gray and purple marker to actually get some makeup done on this little pretty lady. Uh, I love how villains usually have uh, shady um, smoky eyes makeup and purple uh, lipstick or red lipstick. It's so much fun to actually make that makeup in real life on your face but it's even more fun when you draw it on the characters. I felt like something was missing because the white area behind her is actually a stylized hair. I wanted her to have white hair. That's why I was adding some additional green details around her to make it look like an ominous evil uh, magic floating around her and even uh, ended up um, framing the entire piece in a dark gray color so it all has like that art nouveau look I guess so um, I really like that style and I really like playing with different styles combining them with manga style and etc and of course with fashion design which is my main skill so it's always fun to just uh, play with manga style and discover new styles and maybe create new styles it's all up up to you I guess and uh, the, the funnest part was definitely just playing with these new bold colors which in one point I was like thinking oh my god I messed up these colors are so strong so vibrant but that's actually the, the original colors from the original Maleficent design so I really wanted to give an homage to that character by using the colors the original authors were using on her and I really hope how I really hope that you like how she ended up looking And she's done! If you want to support my artbook project, you can always become a patron on my Patreon page, link down below in the description. And if you want to learn how to draw manga, you can always purchase my Manga Crash Course book, available in English and French languages in all your local bookstores and on Amazon.com. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time!